The story of the serial killer Madame Delphine La Lorie is undoubtedly the most famous anecdote from New Orleans history. And her house, right here behind me on the corner of Royal and Governor Nichols Street here in the French Quarter, is commonly regarded as the most haunted house in America. Since the New Orleans tour guide industry really got going in the early 90s, there's been a lot of renewed interest in Delphine La Lorie and her crimes. And there's a weird oral tradition that happens here in the French Quarter among tour guides. Every time the story gets retold, they add their own little spin on it, and like a game of telephone, the story just gets more gruesome and more extreme with each retelling. I should know, because I was a tour guide for four years here in the city of New Orleans. I have stood on this corner, or that one, or that one, or any number of these, and told a folkloric rendition of this story literally a thousand times. So. Now, though, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to tell you the true story, the real story of Delphine LaLaurie's life and crimes. Now, some of you who have been watching these for a while might be experiencing an acute sense of deja vu, because a while back I made a video about this exact same topic. But I wasn't really that happy with how it turned out. The audio wasn't very good. None of these people live very long. They did live long enough to be taken. But more importantly, it just wasn't entirely accurate. I basically lifted it straight from my old ghost tour that I used to do, and so there were some things in there, some errors that were intentional, you know, that I put in for comedic or dramatic purposes and that I drew directly from folklore, and a couple of the mistakes were just honest ones on my part. I got a couple of things wrong. Uh, as with all of the New Orleans ghost story videos that I've done, I always make it very clear in the video itself that this is informed much more by folklore than actual history. Um, but, uh, and I'm going to leave that one up with a clear disclaimer in the comments, and uh, just because it might be interesting for people to compare the folkloric version of the story with the real version. I don't know, it could be kind of cool. But enough of that. Here is the true story of Madame Delphine La Lorie. She was born in 1787 to a very wealthy and powerful family, the McCarthys. At age 13, she had a scandalous affair with a wealthy Spanish colonial official, a guy named Don Ramon de Lopez, and she got pregnant. Six months later, they were married. Their marriage didn't last very long, though, because Don Ramon died suddenly when they were in Havana en route to Spain, so Delphine got married again some years later, this time to a Frenchman, a slave trader. His name was, um, oh, uh, Jean Blanc. I'm sorry, guys, uh, I don't know what happened. I must have drawn a Blanc on his name. Jean Blanc did a lot of business with Jean Lafitte, who is a very famous figure from New Orleans history. He's known primarily these days for his piracy, but he actually made his fortune from slave trading. Jean Blanc was the one who delivered the letter to Governor Claiborne, which basically was from Lafitte, and told uh, Claiborne and Andrew Jackson and the American officials here in New Orleans that he would help them defend the city against the British during the War of 1812, of course, the Battle of New Orleans. Uh, but then he died, which left Delphine with a bunch of debt and five small children to feed. Ten years later, Delphine married her third husband, Louis La Lorie, a young doctor fresh off the boat from France. They actually had a bastard child out of wedlock, but then they got married in a ceremony that is typically regarded as Louisiana's first recorded cougar attack. The marriage was not a happy one. The couple didn't spend much time together, and when they did, they bickered constantly. By 1832, they were effectively separated. The previous year, Delphine had bought two lots right here on Royal Street and built her now infamous mansion. And it was around this time that rumors started to circulate around town that the La Loris were uncommonly cruel toward their slaves. In Louisiana back then, there were a set of laws called the Code Noir, or the Black Code. It was a leave-over from French and Spanish colonial days. Basically, it ensured the barest minimum of human rights for slaves. Uh, you couldn't mutilate or murder a slave. You couldn't separate a slave child younger than 12 from their parents, that sort of thing. In 1829, Delphine was convicted of violating a Code Noir law, we don't know which one, the records are incomplete, and fined $300. The rumors continued, and they were confirmed, and sadly, much, much more, on the early morning of April 10th, 1834. That night, a fire broke out in the La Lorie's kitchen, where the garage is today. It quickly grew out of control and started to threaten the slave quarters directly above it on the second floor. One of the men, a judge, asked Louis for permission to go to the slave quarters and rescue those inside. Louis brusquely told the judge to mind his own goddamn business. But here was the thing. This man was a judge. So he simply ordered the firefighters to break down the doors, and what they found horrified them. 
It was a torture chamber, and inside they found several slaves who had been starved, mutilated, and chained. Nobody exactly knows the specifics. Two New Orleans newspapers, The Courier and The Bee, ran stories about the LaLaurie Mansion just a week or so after these events took place, though their reliability has been legitimately questioned, so keep that in mind. The papers claimed that among those found in the LaLaurie Mansion was an old woman chained to the stove in the kitchen with a gaping head wound, a boy who had been chained to the wall in the slave quarters for five months and barely fed anything, and an old man with a hole in his head with maggots in it who had scarves running down his entire body. Recent renditions of the story, as I mentioned earlier, has just gotten way more extreme. Tour guides routinely talk about a young girl who was stuffed inside a three by three by three wooden box, her bones broken and contorted to fit into that small space. Then there's the crab lady, the famous crab lady whose arms were twisted, and her legs too actually, twisted back so that she could only move around by walking like a crab. And then there's the caterpillar lady who supposedly had her limbs removed and her skin flayed and twisted so she kind of looked like a caterpillar. There are endless numbers of variations. Whatever the truth, the torture was sufficiently vile that many of the onlookers and neighbors, many of whom were slave owners themselves, decided to rush into the LaLaurie mansion and trash the place. And they did. They completely destroyed it, turned it upside down, but they did not find Delphine and Louis. In the chaos, knowing full well what was behind that closed door in the slave quarters, they gathered up their kids and skipped town. A carriage man took them far to the north, to the shores of Lake Pontchartrain, where they hopped on a boat to Mandeville, stayed there for a little bit, then went on to Mobile, Alabama, then to New York City, and then finally across the Atlantic to safety in Paris. I wish I could say that the long arm of the law eventually caught up with these two, but that would be a lie. Delphine remained in Paris, living in happiness and luxury, until her death in 1849. By then, Louis had abandoned the family and moved to Havana, Cuba, where he died in 1863. By the 1880s, this house was considered to be extremely haunted, and it was a minor tourist attraction even then. Local legend holds that nobody's been able to hold on to this place for more than five years, I guess because of the curse of the LaLaurie Mansion or something. And while that's not strictly true, it is true that it's seen a variety of owners over the years, uh, most famously, of course, the actor Nicolas Cage. I've heard through just the grapevine, this is word of mouth, so I don't know if it is entirely true, but it's said that he only spent a single night in this house. Uh, he was just so terrified by it that he could never stay here again. Well, whether you believe Nick Cage or the skeptics who say that this is just another French Quarter mansion, there's no doubt that the LaLaurie Mansion holds a very special and very twisted place in the American imagination. This video was brought to you by my very generous patron, Dylan Abbott. Uh, normally, Dylan, being in my Stonewall Brigade of Patrons, would choose his own shout out for me to, uh, you know, give him every month. But this one was actually my choice because I learned that Dylan was running in the 2020 Boston Marathon, which is awesome. And he's currently raising money uh, as part of that for the Boston Medical Center. Now, this is going to a really good cause. Uh, the Boston Medical Center is trying to alleviate homelessness in the city of Boston, as well as to fight substance abuse, which obviously is a huge problem all across the country, but New England has been hit particularly hard by it. Uh, the link to where, where to donate should be flashing across the screen right now, as well as uh, down below in the comments, of course. I do encourage you guys, please dig deep for my buddy Dylan. Uh, this is toward a really good cause, and he and I would both really appreciate it. All right, y'all. Goodbye. <laughs>